Clarium and Raid Shadow Legends have officially announced their next fusion champion coming to the game. It's going to be a hybrid style event where you can earn fragments to acquire champions. Then you have to take those champions and fuse them into the legendary that is up for grabs during the event. And that's going to be for Armands the Magnificent, who is kind of themed after like a Jack Sparrow, Pirates of the Caribbean, pirate type barbarian. And this is all news from yesterday, so I'm sure most of you have heard by now from a lot of the content out there in the community about this fusion starting in a few days on March 7th. But I want to talk about why this is such a big deal and why players are kind of outraged about Plarium going this direction with this champion. And what kind of comes to mind for me is back in like 2019, 2020, somewhere around, around there, back in the early days of Raid, they came out with a fusion for Tormund the Cold. A lot of you are familiar with him now. He's one of the staples of those go second defensive teams that fill a good niche in the arena and PvP mostly. Well, back in the day when Plarium released Tormund as a fusion, he was a bombshell drop, a, a nuclear bomb on the game, completely changed everything. And Plarium had to come out and address this and adjust him and nerf him and rebalance him like three or four times to get him to be the version that you see now, which I think could be happening with Armands. If we fast forward a month or two from now, I think it's going to be absolute madness and they're going to have to make some adjustments here to this champion. And what's really confusing to me is if I had to pick, uh, yeah, I've been playing raids since basically day one. If I had to pick one thing that players kind of universally hate the most, it's probably the introduction of the polymorph debuff to the game and having all these sheep running around everywhere in the arena constantly in your battles, bringing tons of RNG and tons of ridiculous madness to PvP fights. It's probably the one thing that is the most universally hated. People are always wanting polymorph to get adjusted polymorph to get removed from the game polymorph is ruining certain champions that i like to use in the game and it really confuses me as to why plarium keeps leaning into it like if anything they're doubling and tripling and quadrupling down they just keep wanting more and more polymorph more and more polymorph discussion more and more polymorph champions and they want sheep to be more and more prevalent everywhere you go and I don't really understand why they just keep slamming people over the head with polymorph and it's probably the most hated thing in the game so it's a very confusing decision but also as part of this discussion I want to go through each individual ability here and then I usually do on the channel I grade each ability and then give you an overall grade for the champion and then I try to predict what percentage of the community is going to want to go after completing the event. And then we'll do some polling on the channel and we'll see how my opinion compares to the community and all of that so we can have as much information as possible as we move into the next fusion. So we've got an A1 here. Attack one enemy has a 35% chance of increasing the cooldown of a random active skill by two turns. Fill the champion's turn meter by 10% for each turn added to the cooldown. So a pretty ridiculous A1 and Plarium is really going down the route of adding a ton of cooldown manipulation to the game. It's just everywhere. In almost every champion they bring to the game, they are really slamming cooldown manipulation everywhere. It used to be a very niche thing. It used to be very special. That's why champions like Prince Kaimar were... Argu Prince Kaimar was arguably the most sought after legendary just overall because he was so good in PvP and PvE. And he enabled so many different teams in terms of speed farming and all over different areas of the game because of the cooldown manipulation that he was able to do. But we've seen them just keep adding and adding and adding champions to the game that do all sorts of lowering cooldown or increasing cooldown. And it seems to be a big push of theirs in 2023, 2024 to get a lot more of that into the game. But all in all, this is a very solid A1. Whenever you can get buff manipulation or cooldown manipulation or CC, any one of those core three, whenever you can get them on a default A1 ability with no cooldown itself, it's always going to be a really good A1. So we're going to have to give this an A. It's almost an A+. Plus, but we do need accuracy to land it. But that does synergize with his kit because he's going to need accuracy anyway. So definitely an A, A plus kind of A1. And you know what? I will go A plus on this because he does, well, it's not going to be that great versus bosses actually. So eh, maybe I will leave that at an A. And then we've got the A2 ability here that books to a three turn cooldown and it's going to be attack all enemies, steal the turn meter of each target, steals all the turn meter of each target. That That is completely ridiculous. If, if it was just that, if it was just AOE, 
steal all turn meter i'd be like dang that's uh that, that, that's pretty that, that's pretty crazy but then we get because remember it's not just lower the turn meter or remove turn meter it is steal it so it's going to take their turn meter and add it to him basically granting him an extra turn they could have just said on this skill but it's even better because he can get tons of turn meter like like, like he can steal like three turns worth of turns from the other team based on how full their turn meter is but there is a caveat here that says accept enemies under a sheep debuff so he's going to steal all of the turn meter unless they are under a sheep debuff then he's going to let them cycle through that polymorph but then we've got also place a stun debuff for one turn on all enemies not under a sheep so if they're not already polymorphed it's basically game over you're going to steal all of their turn meter reset them back to zero and then you're going to have a 100 chance of stunning them it's just you just place a stun so you're effectively taking two turns from them you're removing their current turn resetting it back to zero then you're placing a stun so it's not like a sleep where it can get they can get knocked out of it or something if they get hit by an aoe it's going to be a stun that causes them to cycle through a whole other turn that they don't get so you're basically preventing two turns from your opponents and this books to a three turn cooldown and it's aoe and yeah it has the qualifier of them not being under a sheep debuff but who cares if they're already under a sheep debuff they're already screws so you don't really need to stun them so yeah there is nothing to talk about here this is just an auto s ability let's pull out the pen here and let's go s on the a2 after I go through all of these, we'll look back and talk about some of the adjustments that I would make if I was a designer over there at Plarium, and we'll talk about some of the possible changes that would be uh, on board if I were in charge over there. But anyway, we've got the A3, place a sheep debuff on an enemy for one turn. Hey, at least it's not AoE. Uh, then have a 75% chance that we can book up to a 100% chance of removing all buffs from all enemies. Fill this champion's turn meter by 5% for each buff removed. So we've got more cycle. And remember, we get two cooldowns from books. So these are both going to go to a 3-3 three, three cycle with him doing tons of turn meter manipulation on every ability, placing CC, doing buff manipulation by removing all buffs from all enemies, AoE buff strip. We've got a sheep debuff placed on an enemy we've got aoe turn meter suppression which is the stealing version of it aoe cc and then cooldown manipulation on the a1 this is already completely ridiculous so on the a3 right here we're gonna go with an a it's definitely very solid again it's not going to be great versus bosses or anything but uh still a, an extremely solid ability for the niche in the game that he is going to provide then we have a passive whenever a sheep debuff is removed or expires on an enemy increase the cooldown of a random active skill on that enemy to its max so not just increasing by one or two turns increasing it to the max and then fill the champion's turn meter by 10 percent for each turn added to the cooldown if there are multiple champions on the team with this skill only one will activate and that is going to be obviously brutal because it synergizes with his a3 where he's placing the sheep that's going to interact with his passive and then do even more increasing of cooldowns to synergize with his a1 that is also doing that every time he uses his default ability so i mean when you when you get just passive cooldown manipulation that's like an s tier passive because it's not even something he has to physically take a turn to do it's just passive value and then he also brings an aura of increases ally speed in arena battles by 28%. That is another A aura. It's not all battles. If it was like 24% all battles, it would be an S tier. It's only arena, but it is a very, very good one. It's like in the top 10 of arena speed auras. So definitely an A right there on the aura. So very quickly we can see, um, first of all, as a cycle of 3-3, three, three, which is great for cooldown abilities, and he can also cycle through even more efficient because he's got constant turn meter fill of himself there. So he's going to be one of those champions that you can build in high speed and he can just cycle through and just completely pop off with the synergy of these abilities going 3-3 three, three, and then also having a default ability that's going to increase cooldowns, kind of basically giving him an extra turn on top of the opponents that are going. So yeah, absolutely crazy the type of cycling the champion can do while also having buff manipulation cooldown manipulation cc and polymorph and all sorts of stuff going on passive value of increasing cooldown the champion is completely ridiculous one of the best fusions they've ever done
but the reason that the title of this video is going to be probably something like this is bad for raid or this is going to be a disaster or what is Polarium doing is because I, I think this is going to be a little bit of a sugar high like yeah you're going to be in, putting a champion out there as a fusion that people are probably going to be like oh I don't really want to skip this because this kit is pretty crazy but I don't know if this is good for the long-term health of the game. You, I, I could argue that Ultimate Death Knight was a little bit similar. Ultimate Death Knight was a really hyped up promotion that did well in the short term, but seems a little bit of a bad addition long-term to the game in terms of what it's done and what it's caused with people trying to progress in the arena and UDK being in every team and being super annoying. I wonder if this is going to be kind of similar to what Tormund was back in 2019, where Plarium is going to look at the two or three months down the road and be like okay we need to make some adjustments to our mons but i really hate when companies do that in these games because it's super annoying overwatch does this recently they released a champion with their battle pass a super op tank called malga and he just completely obliterated every team you had to have him or you lose so they incentivize people to buy the battle pass to get him and then they just say oh sorry he's a little bit too strong and they balance him after everybody already bought him so they get to make the money from incentivizing people to buy a super strong champion and then after they collect all that money and he settles into the normal role of the game they just nerf him and balance him and i really i, I think that's kind of a toxic way to go about it and I kind of think this is going to be something similar where Plarium uses this as a hype tool to get people to go, wow, I really need this champion. And then after they collect the increase in revenue and the increase in hype from everybody wanting to go after the fusion, they're going to then balance him and adjust him and come out and maybe make some changes and then make it kind of fit within the theme of the game a little bit better than it is currently. And then you kind of get that similar Malga situation where you release something OP and then balance it later. And if they don't do that, if they just leave him like this permanently, I think it's going to change Raid. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we've already seen this with like Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong really changed Raid. Same as UDK. They're just all over the place. UDK and Sun Wukong all over the game. You're going to run into them constantly. And then Armand's is going to be similar. You're going to run into him constantly everywhere. And he'll slide in similar to UDK and Sun Wukong where you just see him everywhere. But okay, what would I do if I were designing the champion and if I could make changes to it? I don't like to just complain. I like to also bring solutions to the table. So what I would do on the A1 is probably change this to increasing the cooldown of a random active ability by one turn instead of two. And I would leave it otherwise mostly the same. That would make it like an A- minus ability. And it would be mostly fine for a legendary default ability. But overall, in general, I think they should shy away from the amount of cooldown manipulation they're adding to the game. Then on the A2, I would probably have it steal a certain amount of turn meter. I would have it steal like 50% of the turn meter instead of just flat out all of it. And then instead of placing a stun, I would have this place a sleep instead of a stun. So I would nerf the stealing of the turn meter a little bit and then have a sleep instead of a sun. So it's more of a soft CC instead of a hard caps uh, CC with the stun. Then for the A3, I would just completely rework this. I don't think people want to see more polymorph in the game. So I would just completely do something different and I would go a different direction with him. If I was Plarium, I would start kind of slowly moving away from Polymorph and doing less and less of it and trying to make Polymorph less and less of a thing in my game. So I would just completely rework this and do an entirely different skill. But I'm mostly fine with giving him the ability to do AoE buff strip and turn meter fill. It kind of synergizes with his abilities there doing the turn meter fill. Uh, for the passive, again, I would probably just completely do something different and remove I, I wouldn't release a fusion going out to everybody that adds more sheep and more polymorph to the game so again i would just go a completely different route with the passive so there isn't really changes i can tell you on the a3 and the passive the aura i'm mostly fine with um having an area specific 28 percent there's nothing wrong with that that's perfectly fine to give to any champion so there's my thoughts on the upcoming fusion happening on Thursday coming up soon here this week. And also remember to head over to the community tab where you can voice your opinion and I will talk about how the voting is shaking out in future videos. I will link down in a pinned comment to the community tab where you can vote on the different polls here that we do on the channel. So I appreciate all of you and remember to subscribe on your way out. If you enjoy Rage Shadow Legends content, I will see you soon in the next video. Have a good weekend. Peace.